Oh, yeah. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that you are well. It is Sunday, and so we are doing Sunday Night Teacher Talk. So we're trying to get you. Look, we're trying to get – there's there is a few of you that still have a uh, stretch of time in this school year. Some some folks are done. There are people that are laying on the beach. We don't really talk about those people because guess what? Those are the people that will be back by Labor Day, and uh, we'll still be we'll still be relaxing a bit. Uh, so – what I would love to do today, um, I know, realize like this time of the year, the numbers get smaller and smaller. As long as there's questions, I'm staying on here. So if you got questions, let's do it. If not, that's cool too. Look, and if you are interested, this is also a podcast. You can go on anywhere that podcast. Oh yeah, I forgot to shut that. Anywhere that podcasts are happening, and you can catch us as a podcast comes out every Monday. And uh, that way, like if you don't want to use your Wi-Fi on the way to work, or you don't have Wi-Fi, you can just download the podcast and it's way easier. Um, and I think that's it. We have a question that was sent in ahead of time, but... Um, By a podcast listener, because they don't watch, they're not around for the YouTube, so they, they watch it strictly on podcasts. Yeah, or real quick for the video watchers, I want to show them this, this special treat we found the other day. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what my thing is with hands, um, but I found these... <laughs> guys at uh and if you're so if you're listening to the podcast what do they have are hands that are maybe an inch long they're pencil toppers and you put them on the top of your pencil and i mean come on this is <laughs> marley's this. been using them to pet the cat with and it is hilarious it ha- there's no, endless there jokes cat hair all over it i was wondering oh why that's why she's something. using it to pet the cat <laughs> so like i just there's a million things you could do with these but i saw them and now i'm going to try and we should get these for our Yes. Website when the new one comes out. Um, yeah. But all right. So the question, what was her name? I just want to make sure I say Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer asked on Facebook what, so I've been talking about, um, and I love, I really love feedback like this because it's feedback that sometimes I say things and, I, and I'm not sure how much people, you forget what, you forget that, you know, we all, if you know, you know, right? As as uh, as Ash Cash would say, if you know, you know. And so, but if you don't know, then you don't know. If I don't always know what people know and what they don't know. So I say something and then I appreciate follow-up questions because it really helps me to say like, oh, okay, I should speak more on that. So Jennifer's question revolved around this idea of not just becoming a better teacher, but becoming kind of a better you. And to be a better teacher, you have to be a better you. You can't do awesome things unless you are feeling awesome. You could pull that off for a time, but there's no, there's no scaling that. There's no longevity in that in that practice. So she was asking for books that she could look into over the summer that would help her. So what I, I have, so the one book that really comes to mind for me, there's two that I probably read in the last couple of years. My friend Jill um, put me onto a book called The Five A.M. Club. Now look, I was at a conference the last few days, a lot of conversation around like, um, do you have to wake up at five in the morning or be a crazy person and wake up even before that? Like, and if you don't, do you feel less than, and there's no template for success with regards to that. Um, that you get up when you get up. And I think it's, what are you doing with it? With the number of hours that you're doing when you're awake? So, however, the 5 a.m. club has a lot of other good stuff in it, and it's told through like a narrative. So there's a story that goes along instead of just being like this download of principles and precepts and all of these sorts of things. Um, the other one is uh, by one of my mentors, Dr. Darius Daniels, who wrote a book called Relational Intelligence. And I just, it is like one of the core tenants that we as a couple, that I as a human being stand on is this idea of you are like, I don't know, this sounds a little bit more absolute than I want it to sound like, but you're basically as strong as your relationships, right? Like that if you have poor relationships, they are a drain on you. And what you want them to do is fill you up and for you to fill other people up and have this reciprocal um, relationship. So Uh, relational intelligence is a really good one. And then if I was going to give a couple other sort of ideas, the the three things I focus on the most, right? And I'll make this quick, are sleep. I have optimized my sleep tremendously in the last few years, right? I did not used to give a lot of thought to sleep. I thought like, I was like one of those, I'll sleep when I'm dead, bro. 
it turns out you're not sleeping when you're dead. You're because you're dead. Um, but the but having really good quality sleep is very, very important to me. So I've looked into that a lot. Um, diet and exercise. If those three things are in line, your whole life's just better. Like when you are doing those three things regularly and pretty well, not even awesome, just pretty well, then your whole life feels better. So some folks that will speak to that and beyond are any, you can look up anything by uh, Dr. Darius Daniels and your life will be better. Also, um, Ed Milet is like my guy. And so if you listen to his podcast or read any of his books, like he's a really, really powerful speaker. And then um, if you want to get really into the neuroscience and a little bit beyond into the woo-woo, uh, sometimes sometimes it, get, it gets a little strange. But Dr. Joe Dispenza, though, man, that dude will change your life. Uh, the, the work that he and his team have done around neuroscience and the psychology of of feeling good, of being good, of doing great stuff. Like those three folks, I listen to their podcasts regularly and, and, but they all have books as well. If that's more your fashion, if you want to get audible, if you want to read something on the beach or whatever, um, that's kind of my answer for that, but it is absolutely imperative. One of the things we're really thinking about for next school year is like, how do we help teachers to grow them as human beings, because that's going to help you to be a better teacher. And that what we want to do here at Real Rap with Reynolds is not just help you have a great time in the classroom, but have a great life. And because many of us, you feel great and then you go home and you want to just drink a box of wine and die on the couch because you're so exhausted and you need to have something to give back. So that but that's something we're kind of getting into. Um, question? Yep. This microphone's all over the place. So I, I'm, I apologize if this doesn't sound good. Sorry, Jake. <laughs> All right. Miss L is up first asking, uh, oh, I should pop that up there. What are the things to consider when looking for a teaching job in a different provenance or state, i.e. relocation um, considerations? Are there things to specifically ask new out of town schools? So first of all, you know, you're from Canada. If you start off with a province or state, right? Because no one in the United States ever goes, you know, if you're moving to another state or province. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think that I was like, mm -hmm. that's a telltale sign. I'm from Canada. So uh, that's a great question. I, I think it's, it's trying to, I think some of these things are a bit more intuitional. So if you're moving from one place to another, seeing if the values of that, of the new place that you're moving to align with the values that you have as a human being and seeing if that is, uh, it, like, it's it, like sort of, I think Nassim was asking last week, this idea of like, when you go to a school, how do you really know what they're about, what they're doing, what's important to them? And I think some of that is, it's, it's looking beyond the, the meeting. It's looking beyond the interview. It's looking beyond, it's like taking a peek into classrooms. It's looking at like what's on the walls in the school, looking at how teachers that you're not talking to are engaging with young people behind you. It's sort of trying to get that vibe. And that's that sort of sixth sense that you have to use to really get a sense of if this is a place for you or not. I think that it's fine to ask straightforward questions like, well, what like what are your core values? What's the most important to you here? How, how do you um, retain teachers? Like, what's your plan on creating a strong teacher retention? Um, you know, how, how do you meet needs of students that uh, are, that whose learning needs are different than, than the average student? And so you're asking about those, because those all lead to the pain points, the pressure points, that teachers that feel overwhelmed, students that don't fit into the mold of the average classroom, and are they or are they not getting those resources, things of that nature. I see your hands raised, Ms. Rollins. Uh, it is. <laughs> Staff, you're not supposed to say those okay. things. Um, I just, that's a little sign for you. Um, so I, I think also if it's like, especially like if you're going to a whole new state um, or province, uh, you would ask like about the community, not just necessarily the school, but who are they serving and what is the surrounding communities yeah. that they're serving? Like, what is it, what is it like in those communities? Because you don't know if you're out of state or like completely relocating, like you don't know anything about not just the school, but the community that the school serves. Yeah. And so it's asking for me, in my mind, I think it's like asking about the community that, the, that they serve, that the school serves. And then that will, if it's like a low income area or more affluent, like that can help yeah. like guide your 
questions as well. Yeah. So almost asking. Because there's different problems for different. Should I get a job here? Uh, what are what are some things that I would should look into or research about the community that would help me to show up to be a better teacher? Because it's really about knowing the people you're going to work with. Right. The and that that's going to be so different. The values that folks have in West Philly, although some might be the same if I move to Nebraska, some might be vastly different, you know, belief systems. What do people do in their off time? What do family structures look like? Uh, you know, Even all that the stuff. environment. I mean, West Philly is completely different than Haddon Heights. Yeah. You know, where you grew up. So even that, like, they're just two very different communities. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I think asking about the community and having a sense yeah. of that. Yeah. That's a really, yeah. All right. Are you ready for the next one? Hit it. All right. I got to find it. Sorry. This is what happens when I talk. See, it's all right. Do we I'm need not, a third I'm person? Not, I know. I'm not a great multitasker. Should we train our children to be behind the scenes? <gasps> no, <laughs> that might be disastrous. That okay. Jessica's hilarious. up next asking, I have found community with teachers outside of my department. I feel bad that I don't spend time with my actual team, but they're super negative and burnt out. So um, two parter. Oh, Should sure. I try to spend more time with them or try to be a better team member? No, uh, <laughs> no. So here's why. a quick one. Right? I, I just know the answer. Here's why, Jessica. Being around folks that draw your energy from you, or all it's going to do is draw your energy from you, right? You need to be around people that. So what I do is, I've, I've had, so hmm, how do I want to put this? I do, I am cool with everyone. I just know who I'm going to spend my time with. And I just don't make any bones about it. Like I don't, I don't make, I don't, that's a weird saying, but I don't, I don't ever try to explain myself. I get along with who I get along with. I don't cut anyone out. If you want to be around us or hang out with us, like that's fine. But I'm telling you, it is going to be like, it is going to be a lot of sunshine and rainbows, not because that's innately who we are, but because that's who we need to be to do the work, right? Like I want to be excited about this. I want to think of cool new ideas. I want to hear about what you're working on in your classroom and what you're doing as a lesson and how uh, maybe I'll share a bit with what, what I'm doing. And then folks are giving me feedback and it's like, it is it's like a party atmosphere. And you know what makes people not want to be around you is when they don't want to be in a party. When you're in Eeyore, you don't want to hang out with six tiggers at a time. It's very, very awkward. And, and, and so it is just being mindful of that. Now, look, I can check in with folks. I can say hello. I can like, I can be kind, but I find that, you know, I think, um, and I don't want to make this sound, I don't want to do two things here. One, I'm not trying to do like a like a like a humble brag, and also this new thing I'm learning about. We did not talk about this yet. And we need to. Mm. Uh, telling my wife that uh, <laughs> is that sometimes tr people try to be humble, but it's really they're being prideful, and and so that that man, that's some deep stuff we need to talk about. But mm. um, that being said, uh, I think Denzel Washington said that your angels aggravate other people's demons, right? Like folks that want to live in the dark, don't want light in the room. Right. And it's, it's aggravating to them. So I feel like I'm almost doing a service to you, bro. Like I'm not hanging out with you, but I'm hanging with my crew over here because they are fun and exciting. I, I mean, I've, I guess I sometimes have hung with people that were in the English department, but mostly like when I think about who my crew was last year, it was, Walker was in the history department. Miller was in the art department. Meeks wasn't even a teacher. Neither was Stu. Like Cho was in charge of discipline. Um, yeah, I don't think like you've ever just hung out with your like, department. What's that? I don't think you've ever hung out with like your street Like department. a little bit. But I got along with them. Like I got along sure. with Rebuy, but we didn't like hang, hang in school. We didn't do like lunch together and joke around together and stuff. So Witter. she added in the comments, yeah. she said, um, I feel guilty that I'm not spending time with the people in my department. I've tried sharing my positive outlook, but they just don't want, want to change. Yeah. And I think that that's right. Like, I don't think you shouldn't feel guilty. I think it's, it's putting a boundary in because that person, those people might not be good for your own energy and you 
ultimately are you're responsible for your own energy. Yeah. So you have to protect it. And people think that that's mean or selfish. And I don't think it's mean or selfish. I think it's putting up a boundary line and that's okay. It doesn't mean that you're rude to someone. It doesn't mean that you're nasty or you don't help them when they come in and need help from you. But if you're not jiving with your energy on the same level and they don't want it after you've tried to share it, that's a whole different story that you can only do that. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. I mean, that saying yeah. works. in. However, different. you keep it open in case they absolutely do need something. They do want something. They are like, you know, what? I'm getting a little tired hanging out with that other crew. Then come on over here because we're just like kicking it every day. And it might be, you know, last thing, Jessica, these are moments when I like this is like a moment that like I might ask one of my mentors or I might ask my therapist like I'm feeling guilty and I need to unpack why that's making me feel guilty. Mm -hmm. What is that about me? Because there's something else kind of going on there. And I'm not trying to be a therapist. I don't, I'm not a therapist. And I don't try to play one online. But like these are our own questions that we ask in our own yeah, life. Like it is. So it comes what out is of experience. A thing? Not... So when I get <laughs> aggravated at someone in the house, it's like, what's behind that? Was it really what you did that aggravated me? That's just food for for thought. Good. All right. Our next... I really look, I feel like I'm on Duck Dynasty today. I have this brown shirt on and a camouflage hat. You need a bigger beard for Duck Dynasty. I'm working on it. No. <laughs> I'm going to get one. All right. Mr. Bolin, let's change the subject. Thank you, Mr. Bolin, asking, how do you provide effective feedback for students? I feel like sometimes it is overwhelming and they don't always use it. No, uh, I know. Like when you grade a whole paper and you write like thousands of notes on it and no one reads them. What I try to do is, um, so this is a great question. So how do I provide student feedback? One of the things that I do is pare down the amount of things I'm going to grade on a particular assessment or assignment. So I'm not grading all the things. I'm grading some of the things. And those are things that we've worked on a bunch of times. And then it's sometimes getting kids to correct those things. So it's making them touch it again. And then again and again and again and again. So like I got this assignment, I did it, I handed it in. Oh, you graded it. Oh, now I have to give it back. What? I already did it. Um, yeah, you have to make corrections and hand them back in. That can really help as well. And it's you know, I think sometimes it's tracking some of those things. One of the things that we've been really thinking about, we were just talking about this morning, um, is helping like the value in helping young people track. So, and not just by grades, but by ability and, and doing that without the soul breaking task of taking a state assessment or a benchmark test. So it could be something like a benchmark, but can we do these in smaller quantities? So it's like, let's see, how are you growing on your vocabulary on whether it's your spelling, whether it's your uh, ability to do a word problem or your, you know, whatever that is in your particular class, but it's helping students to track some of those things going forward is really important. And that's, that's work we're actually doing now um, talking about, this idea of like, how do we help students track? How do we help teachers track? Because, you know, I did a brand deal recently. Um, with, I, I've talk, I think I talked about them last week also with a company called OrCam. And one of the incredible things, and this is not part of that branded deal, but I, I only work with brands that I like. The, the vice is in the other room, but it's about this big. And it looks like an external charger basically for, for your phone but it tracks students' data. So it, it tracks like their reading comprehension, how much better they've gotten on their reading comprehension, their word um, usage, their word recognition, that all kinds of stuff. And it is free. It's awesome, man. It's incredible. And now they just upgrade it. Now it like reads in other languages and will translate it. So which there goes every manga fan in the world just freaked out because they can read manga in Japanese. But um, but it's like, I just think there's such beauty in being able to track, um, because you can scale that over time. But ultimately I would say it's finding, it's doing smaller pockets of stuff, really getting super focused, going heavy, deep and real on one or two or three or five things on a specific paper or assignment. And then like reviewing those with kids and reviewing those with kids and reviewing those with kids. Um, which is why I only do five vocab words a week. Because I don't want to do, I don't, I don't think there's value in doing 30. I don't think anyone remembers 30. But if I go hard on five a week, man, you know those for the rest of your life. 
All right, John is up next, John Fox, asking, in a perfect world, teachers would have 10 or less students in a class. Mm. If your classes are large, 30 to 35, uh, what adjustments need to be made? What would you do to maximize learning for all? I think it's the type of learning that I do, John. Um, there are, when you have that many students, it's use, utilizing things like groups. Uh, so I'd say this first, actually, bro, like when you have large groups of students, 30 to 35 kids, it's figuring out how those different individuals learn best. So that's going to come from maybe doing some sort of, uh, you have like a brief, brief assessment that kids can take and it's going to, they're going to answer questions based on like how they best like to learn and the best way that they learn. The other thing is really looking at, um, you know, can I do things like groups? Can I do projects more? Can I do, self-directed learning, you know, it it's going to depend on more than just the size, but the ability of the students and, and the needs of the students. So, which is why when I had really large classes, especially like uh, some of my lower level readers, that's when we started implementing plays in class. So we'd read the same text, but I'd find a play version of just about every book that we were going to read. So instead of reading Fahrenheit 451 as a book, we would read it as a play because now I went from um, either so 35 kids, you break them up into groups of, even if it's five kids, that's still, or five kids in a group, that's still seven groups all reading at once is very loud, very distracting. Not a big fan of popcorn reading, but there is something to reading a play aloud because now you went from one person to at least two, three, up to six, depending on the book that you're reading or more. So if you read like 12 Angry Men as, a play and you have all those individuals, that's 12 people reading at one time. It gets, becomes really fun and engaging. And it's actually something that doesn't work when you have smaller groups of people, because what you're living off of sometimes is the reaction of people reading like the characters of them reading in character with either with accent or at certain pace and they're moving along. So you're looking for sometimes you will, those larger groups actually lend themselves to really cool stuff. Like it lends themselves to really great group conversations where you have so many different people. And so it's having a lot of big conversations. It's having a lot of really honest conversations about um, things in the world, things that they're thinking about. It's doing things where you're using, the crowd actually becomes a positive factor in what you're doing in class. Um, so it's, it's trying to think along those lines. All right, Sheena is up next asking, how can uh, how can we make math review engaging so we can finish strong in the midst of apathy and increasing behaviors? High school resource. Math. So gosh, this, amen. Um, I would say, Sheena, that it is, I'm not, there's a lot of things I didn't do. Let me start late with this. There's a lot of things I didn't do when I started teaching. I wasn't super into games. Games always seem to go this way instead of that way. I wasn't super into like visual reminders. Like, so like I would never like count down from five on my fingers to get everyone to be quiet. Uh, I don't, so I don't know. I just had the sense of what I was, what I, the kind of teacher I wanted to be. Then that started butting heads with the kind of teacher I needed to be. And so what I learned was that gamifying just about anything works. It's just the kind of games I was playing before weren't working because it turns out if you give everybody in the classroom a Nerf football, they're going to either chuck at each, at each other or they're going to pull all the pieces off and you got Nerf ball all over, the, all over your floor. So it was trying to find things that not everyone else was doing also, right? So how many of us didn't, like if you were doing Kahoot pre-pandemic, you were using some magical technology that a handful of people in the world knew. Then all of a sudden, after the pandemic, it was like, everybody was like, oh, we're going to do a cahoot today. And the kids were like, yeah. And then like a month later, they were like, oh, because no, everybody this was This year, doing it. like they're still, at least in Marley School, there's yeah. teachers are still using cahoot and like other things. And they're all and like. you can. Ugh. But even last like year, fun. we had to flip how we did our cahoot, right? So it was like, we gamified all kinds of like little aspects. I should I could make, make a video about this, but. Um, like I changed the music on Kahoot. I couldn't stand the Kahoot music. So mm -hmm. we started playing our own music. We played like eight bit 
Jeopardy music or like uh, trap Jeopardy music or whatever. Um, it's it's figuring out ways to gamify it where it's not um, it's not like everyone else is doing. So one of my uh, friends, Chris, who helps run Get Your Teach On, for instance, he has this great game where you and your group are doing reviews. When you get all of the right answers, you have to go up to the teacher and they're going to tell you if your answers are correct or not correct. Once you figure out the correct answers, those answers go, I think, between A and G. Before doing the review, you download on your phone, you download a piano app that is completely free. Or you can do it on your iPad. I think they also have it. You can do it on a laptop if your students just have laptops. You then go to the site. And if you get the letters right, then you're going to plug those in. You have to figure them out on the keyboard. You're going to play it and it will play a very simple song, an Itsy Bitsy Spider or something like that. And then the team that knows the song first wins. Oh, so now, so right? So now we went from there's an incentive <laughs> to getting it right. Uh, it kind of reminds me with a, it's less death defined, but it kind of reminds me of the Goonies when they have to play like the right keys on the piano. Mm -hmm. Otherwise the floor is going to fall through and everyone's going to die. <laughs> uh, but it's doing that without everyone falling to their death. So, but it's just a simple kind of fun way that you could get any grade into that where that becomes the challenge. So it's looking at a few things like that um, that are going to be fun. They're going to be silly. They're going to be interesting. And it's not something maybe the kids have seen before. And even if you're using something, seeing how you can remix that. We do a lot of stuff where um, top two teams that win get to do it. We do a minute to win it game, which if you're not familiar with this, it was a TV show and it might've been something before that, but it's a, these it's very simple games. You need very few things to pull them off and it only takes one minute to do it. And then the winners, that group gets a prize. And in my room, it was usually cereal, but you are trying <laughs> to think of something like that, where it's like to take the same old kind of review, but the winners get to battle it out in this kind of head to head match. Maybe it's a best two out of three minute to win it to stretch a little bit more time, build that engagement, build that excitement. And then the winner gets a prize. And so that's super fun. Yeah. Um, I'll say other fun prizes. Uh, that I don't talk about this enough is microwave popcorn. If you have a microwave in your room or you can get someone to run down the office, you can get those at the dollar store and get like six packs for a dollar. Well, packs and they also have like those really tiny, I'm sorry, I keep coughing. <laughs> um, they have those like really tiny uh, mini packs, like for like, individuals oh yeah, size. yeah like that's even and you don't even need a bowl right so no. if you're freaked out about germs like uh eat just right each kid gets a bag after you ask me this question i ask you a question yeah. can you go get me a glass of water because sure. I'm, I'm parched yeah because you left your empty glass up there oh uh, that was me somebody <laughs> else did that shame on you okay uh jennifer bentley is up next asking i'm a first year teacher and we're in the last couple of days of school i really love and will miss them so much the thing is, I don't really know how to end the year. How do I? Uh, oh, so, oh, it's too far. Okay. How do I show them I care about them and ultimately say goodbye in a genuine yet appropriate way? What grade? Did she have what grade? Uh, she did not. All Jennifer, right, so, what grade are you? Jennifer, can, first of all, can we just congratulate you on being on finishing your first year out? Yeah. Like, that's awesome. And you only ever have that first class one time, right? I still to this day, keep up with students um, that were a part of my first class because they just had I your just, heart. I want to say congratulations because I can't tell you how many people I see because since I look at teacher stuff like constantly, that's on all my socials, um, how many people don't even make it through their first year. Yeah. So kudos to you. You did it. Whether you think it sucks or it was great, like you did it. You completed. Yeah. Well, and she's saying how much she loves them. So it's like, yeah. it's awesome. So Jennifer, I would do, I'm going to forget her name. Maybe you'll remember because she took my, she took this answer to the next level. I like giving away awards is something that I used to do. And the way I would do awards because I didn't have any money is I would go to the thrift store and just buy random cheap crap and, and not good stuff. You're not looking store. for anything good You're, yeah, or the dollar store and just spray paint random things gold. And then I give them to kids as a prize. It is a trophy of a Skylander. Here you go. Uh, or a little Pokemon figure. Or, you know, like, I just... And I wish we like, had her, her that letter that she sent with all the... I think her name was Jody. 
I don't remember. I, I what forget, her. but she did it next, next level. And she made like little tags for kids. So I used to print out, um, you just get them for free online. Like those, you might be able to get them at the dollar store. Like if you, when you're in grade school and you get like a re- award for anything, the teacher signs at the bottom, I would make those, <laughs> but it would be like kid and it would be weird awards too. Right. It would be like most, most likely to um, raise their hand to most likely to go to the bathroom in the first 10 minutes to most likely to eat your pencil when you lend it to them to like all kinds of like silly, silly stuff. You're just looking for commonalities in kids. Another thing that I've done for years is I write a letter to the students at the end of the year. I give it to them on the last day and it just kind of expresses to them how much I cared that you were in my class this year, how much I saw all the wonderful things and maybe noting a couple of things like <laughs> this kid doing this or this group doing this because students will forget. So it's almost like this written yearbook of this project and this activity. And when we did this essay and y'all really worked hard on this super thing, great thing. And we went on this trip. It's sort of logging that and then giving that to students. Like, listen, don't forget that going forward, I'm always here. Like you can come back and see Miss Bentley whenever you would like, you can always count on me. You can like, it's really like letting kids know the thing that you hope that they know you hope that they took away, but maybe they didn't, maybe they're not sure. Maybe they, they they have other, their own stuff going on in their hearts, minds, and souls. And so you're going to put it plain as day in a letter. And for some of those letters, so I would do that. I would um, photocopy. I'd sign all of them by hand, put them in an envelope and then give those out. And then there were little bit lesser ones. So for a kid that like kind of drove me nuts to say that, like, it's been my complete pleasure to be your teacher this year. I might not want to say that, but I will, would still like to express kindness in your way. I can dial those down just a touch. And then for those students that you've made a really, really uh, personal connection with, you can dial those up as well. And so that's just like a simple way to, to kind of send kids off in a, in a in a fun way and in a deeply meaningful way that they can hold on to that letter forever. Mm. Romina still has my letter that I gave oh, her like freshman does. year. Of course yeah. she does. <laughs> All right. Mr. Bolin is up next asking, what are some new hobbies people are interested in? So. St- I don't know. I feel like our daughter laughs at us. And like with anything that we do or interested in, she's like, you guys watch the same things. She laughs at our YouTube. Yeah, oh, uh, She's she- like, you, it's either about business, like making money, like, like making, like just business stuff. Making not always- or managing money. Right. Yes. Jesus. Yep. Or what was the other thing? Um, fitness. Or fitness. <laughs> or I like watching. <laughs> I like. Oh, lawn shows. I watch lo- videos about people who have horrendous lawns and then some come, one comes along and like edges it and mows it and stuff. And they, I find them deeply sad. I watched it probably for like an hour last night. Some guy mowing somebody <laughs> else's lawn. Um, ridiculous. But I don't know. It just makes me happy. Um, you, you know, so I don't, I'm, I don't know what everyone else is interested in. And students, I feel like are always getting into weirder and weirder stuff that uh, there's, they're getting closer to becoming aliens. Um but I think that that's a fun thing. You know, one of the things I love to ask students, and I'm going to ask, answer this on my own. Um, I love asking students, uh, hey, what is something that people my age don't know about? Or what's something that kids are into right now that like most teachers don't know about? And they love that question because it allows them to like give you like the, the you know, the behind the scenes look of like everyone's really into this right now. Um, so yeah, so that's just one question. Um, with regards to us, I don't, I don't know. Uh, t-shirt making. Is yeah. Yeah. Happy. T-shirt making. We're going to start. Well, I'm, I'll give you the glimpse real quick. We're going to start, uh, we're bringing merch back to our website. It's really, really hard to get merch from people. It's hard to get quality stuff. Um, it's with- either costs us a million dollars to actually have something produced by like people who do t-shirts or it's drop shipping. And that is very limited and not, we did not yeah. love it. So we're going to do our own. Yeah. So it's been learning. So in July, we will hobbies. have shirts, hoodies, decals, all kinds of crap. Um, I have this idea. I want to really make pennants for some reason. Um, <laughs> this is like your new, this is CJ's new thing. Yeah, he really I just likes think pennants. they're so fun. It's just, <laughs> just like, it just reminds me of being a kid and like you'd go to the circus and get a pennant and just 
wave it. So I just want to get pennants. That, that... Are you, are you going to wave your pennant is what I want to know. I don't know if I'm going to wave my pen. I'm probably just going <laughs> to hang it on the wall behind me. So we're getting into to that. Like that's our new hobby. Our new thing is like, if you can't find someone to do it for you, why aren't you just doing it yourself anyway? So. Oh know, boy. Yeah. All right. Josh is up next asking as a new school counselor who will be starting in the fall at a new school, how can I come in and win the teachers over and best serve them? This is a great question. Oh, I love this question. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't think that's my glass either. I think it's for no, children, I'm but I know. That. Um, can you, I would say to this one, like ask them. Yes. I mean, that's because it's like, how, you want to serve teachers, but what do they need to be served with? Like, what are their needs? And so, so you're only going to know by asking uh, them. Josh, I would say, and I'm going to forget what her newest book is called, but my friend, Allison Apsey, um, and I don't how do you spell it? I think it's A P S E Y. She has a new book out, uh, came out recently about, I think it's leading the whole teacher or something like that. And it is, I saw her present on it exceptional. And one of her things that she talks about in there is how do we support our staff? We ask them what they need and then we give it to them. So instead of a lot of administrators will ask what people need and they think, well, I'm not going to do that. Like, I don't have that and trying to figure out instead a way to do it. I think doing this before things break is the move also. So it's like, um, I heard, actually, I was at a conference over the weekend, but I'm, I'm going to drink this water real quick. That's going to spill over me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there it is. Because it's on like the edge of the bottle. So... I was at a conference this weekend where one of my mentors was giving this talk and he was saying how he saw all these folks that like they, when they would get burnt out, um, that's when they would start like finding mentors, finding teachers, going to therapy, doing all the things. And he's like, so I just thought, why don't I just do that now? And then maybe I don't have that moment as, as a, as a professional. And I think school's a lot like that. So finding out what do people need? What do they care about? What lights them up? What makes them happy? And then maybe trying to do some of those things. And I've seen, you know, when I've had really good admin, some of these things were a little bit uh, too late. It was kind of like you, the hole was already dug, didn't work out. But, you know, I worked for a guy one time, Ian Dorian hired, we had, yoga at the school at one point they had like yoga folks coming in so we'd have half days on wednesdays and then they would have like yoga for the teachers they had massages that it was like hey look two days this week we spent a couple bucks we have masseuses coming in all you had to do is sign up for a time you come down during your prep and get a massage freaking awesome they made they folks that were like yo we'd love to have like breakfast so he was like bet so he made waffles for everyone one morning like made all this food and had all the toppings and he wore a chef hat and everything like just crushed it, you know? And then there, so it's really kind of listening to what people say and then trying to figure out how you can do that. And then the other thing, Josh, I think is really just seeing people and really listening to them and not thinking about what you're going to say next, but just really showing up. And, you know, some of the best leaders I've ever worked for were the people that would pop in your room and say, Oh, they walk by and be like, Oh, wait, Reynolds. Hey man, how you doing? And then I would answer them and they would listen to me. And then they'd go, oh, man. And so they'd ask a couple follow-up questions. So I knew that I, they cared. And then they would move on. But it was just a nice interaction. You know, so seldom do anyone that's not – folks that are not teachers don't go into teachers' rooms unless they have to observe the teacher or a student in the classroom. So it's breaking those walls and just letting people know that you care, that you're about them, that, you know, remembering the last time that they said, oh, for Halloween, my daughter's going to be this. And then after Halloween going – Hey, did your daughter end up wearing that costume? Like, do you have a picture of it? Can I see it? It's just those little things that mean so much to people that are really working hard just so they can feel seen and cared for. Yes. Um, okay. Alexander is asking, yeah. my school uses a teacher mentor mentor program for new teachers. This coming year will be the first year I'll be a mentor. This is my fourth year. How do I best support them? Um before you even answer this, yeah. I just want to say in our Facebook group, there is a really great post that someone asked a very similar question, like how to support new teachers. And there is a plethora of answers from everyone that said, I wish 
that this was, I was more supported in these areas as a new teacher. So that could be a really good resource, yeah. Alexander, if you're not in the Facebook group, um, or if you are to, to look in there and find that post, um, it's, it's pretty new. So it should be up, up towards the top. Yeah. So that's, that is a great idea. Um, cause just a great resource. Rate, yeah. It's coming from, from teachers people. that said, I either loved having this support when I was the first year teacher or second year teacher, or I wish I would have had this support when I was a first year teacher. I would say as a mentor, I have been a very good mentor and I've been a terrible mentor before. And the years that I was a terrible mentor were years that I bit off more than I could chew. I did a whole bunch of other stuff too. I was also designing things for the play. I was helping to, to, to build things for the play. I was leading trips. I was taking kids abroad. I was, I was do I did too much stuff. And then I couldn't get to my mentee because I was doing too much. It's really carving that time out and making it consistent. So even if that's once a week on Tuesday at this time that you talk to them, it's being super consistent. It's knowing that you don't have to have an answer for anything, for everything, that your attention sometimes is far more important than your advice. Just sitting with someone and, and letting them process and go through the things and letting them do that at their pace. Not every time they stop talking, do you feel like you have to jump in and fix something, which is something I still am working at to this day to get better at. Um, and then I would, Alex, learn, I would read this summer on things like how to best support people that are mentoring. So I think it's it's looking at our Facebook group. If so, if anyone that's not a part of that's Real Rap with Reynolds, Teacher Talk on Facebook, best teacher Facebook group in the world, I believe. And it's um, training yourself on how to be, how to lead, how to mentor people, how to coach people. So I would just look up some YouTube videos this summer or look up some podcasts or, or get a book if you want to, so that you can start growing into the person you need to be to support the person that they are going to be. And I think that that, that will get you far. Absolutely. Okay. What you got, dude? Um, it's my second bottle of water today. Oh, good for you. I mean, you. it's five o'clock almost, so that's oh, not that shucks. impressive, but did you lose it? It just popped me back to the beginning. Oh, man. Um, no, I don't think I did, actually. Uh, let's see. All right, I'm going to show people something for a second then, all right? Okay, go for it. Another weird thing I bought the other day, I was in a store, and I'm always kind of like just looking for like weird, for not, not just weird, for things that will keep kids, so weird keeps kids' attention. I'm looking for things that keep kids' attention when they are done work or not sure what to do. And I have a whole bunch of these in my room. So that it's like, rarely do you get the same thing back unless you want it. And I forgot all about these, Johns, and some of you are too young. But one of these things, the Wooly Wooly, uh, for those on the podcast that are watching it, it is a face of a person, comes with this little pen that has a magnet on the end. And then you lay this down on the desk and you drag these little black, I don't know what it Shards is. Of so metal. I think it's made out of <laughs> tonight. Um, it might be just shards of metal all over this person's face. And then you can like make all these little hairdos and stuff. And I just think that's <laughs> just old enough that kids aren't going to remember. No kid knows what that is. That no, it's unless like a, their parents had Reynolds, what's this? I'm like, bro, this is the iPad before the, this is procreate before procreate, bro. <laughs> what are you even talking about right now? John Lopez, he knows he's yeah. like, Wooly Lopez Wooly! Is like yes. <laughs> L Lopez probably knows exactly who Wooly Willie is, who the original Willie was, <laughs> why they called him Wooly Willie, where he came from. If he doesn't know, he's Googling yeah, it right he now. Knows he's knows all the share things some, about it. Some tidbits about it. Okay. Uh, we're going in with Mr. Boland is up asking, yeah. with the internet speeding up information and distracting even adults, how to get students and ourselves to slow down? Oh. That's a great question. Um, You know... One of the things I'm gonna I'm gonna reference my friend Allison again. I was talking. To, what's that? What were you gonna say? I was gonna say I think it's just it's discipline, right? It's just knowing that that is what's happening and that you have to be disciplined to like. Nope. Like when we're in the car, it's I, I'm always on my phone, People and are I a slave like slave to their. There phone. really are, and we so we've implemented like different things in our house to like say, nope, we're just not on our phones yeah. at this time, and so it's not dinner, easy. Breakfast. We're in the car. There's certain when we're moments. together when we're doing an activity Basically, together. Yeah. It's like whenever the all four of Again. us are together, it's like, no, we put your put our phones away. 
So we turn them over. It's just being disciplined. I don't think there's a great answer unless you got one from Alice. Oh, I have a great answer okay. too, but oh, that's a, that is a great answer, <laughs> what you had as well. So Allison would say, um, you know, one of the ways we slow down, I think, is we folks, especially since the pandemic, need more time to process things. And she has the neuroscience behind that of why it was post pandemic and those sorts of things. But the world has gotten so fast that it is learning how to process stuff. We're not giving people enough time to breathe, to think. You know, one of the things my pastor does that drives me crazy, but not like I don't get angry about it, is he'll say like he'll be on stage like preaching and then he'll be like, y'all aren't talking back to me. And I'm like, bro, because what you just said was such a mic drop. I am, my brain is like working through that right now. So that's some of it. I think also creating environments where we're slowing down, right? So, and some of those things are deeply enjoyable to kids, whether we are taking a walk, whether we are just reading together. And that could be for 10 minutes. We don't have to try and get kids to like read silently alone. Like we're not doing like deer reading uh, for 45 minutes, but even if it's for 10 minutes, doing stuff like getting kids to, to draw, getting kids to play with silly little things or Play-Doh or coloring pages, it is a it, what that's also doing is, and I said this in a in a video recently, it's giving kids a mental break of let me not be consuming, let me give myself something to do that's sort of mundane and repetitive and, and there's a rhythm to it, but that allows my brain to take a moment, to take a break, to take a breath. And I think that those it's it, it has to be look. You're, I don't know that Mr. Boland at, by at the end of the school year, even if this you start this next year, that it's going to solve it. But what we're doing is putting tools in kids' toolboxes so that hopefully they can draw upon those later when they need them. Um, okay, Big Wall is up next, asking, "Have you ever coached a sport?" Wait, hold on a second. <laughs> you know, what I'm going to talk about the profile picture. We're going to talk about that cat in the profile picture. I love cats. We love cats. This is a new love in it's our home. New, I'll tell you what, that's our new hobby. Cats. <laughs> Didn't ever like cats. Then we got one. Now we're those people that watch cat. That's the other thing we watch. We will <laughs> sit there and send TikToks to one another of cats. And it we is, do. We we're love grown cats. Ups. I know. We're grown ups that watch cat TikTok. Go ahead. Sometimes in our, you know, in, you know. So bet this, they win best profile, profile picture. picture of the day. I love it. All right. Well, they are asking, have you ever coached a sport that you have not played? I have been asked to coach softball. This is funny because I know the answer. I have asked, <clears throat> uh, I have been asked to coach softball next year and would like to help out. It will be my first time coaching and uh, of a sport I have not played. Have I been in? I have been asked. Have I ever yes, done it? You coached basketball with Marley and oh, you did not. You don't play no, basketball. No. First of all, I got somebody else to coach it. I was the co coach or the Step or I don't know. I was the other coach. And that's how much I know the about assistant basketball. Coach. You know, I was definitely not assisting. Well, that's I was coaching. That was your title. But I was in charge. Ready for this? Good vibes and excitement. That's what I was in charge of. So we were the happiest team that played basketball that year. Uh, my girls, it was all girls. They friggin' loved coming to basketball. <laughs> So my friend, Mary Beth, she led them and like showed them how to actually play basketball. And I showed them how did. to have fun and celebrate one another. And it was freaking awesome. I have been coached uh, or asked to coach many times because at the district that I was in, there would just be like gaps. Um, it was all the bowling. I was asked to coach one time golf, which I told them I wouldn't do it unless I got to teach. I wanted to coach miniature golf. Uh, and I wanted miniature golf for miniature kids. So the kids were not allowed to be over a certain height because I just thought it would be funnier. Um, and it rolls off the tongue better, miniature golf for miniature kids. Um, and then uh, I was asked to do track because they were like, well, you run. Bro, I run, but I don't know anything about <laughs> shot putting or javelin throwing or cross country doesn't even happen in the country. Bro, what? That's so dumb. So um, I didn't know, but I... I think of it this way. <clears throat> if it's really important to the students to win, you might want to think about not doing it or getting someone else that know, actually knows how to do it to do it. If you just think that they need a body, 
and the it's kind of the bad news bears anyway, and they just need someone there that's going to love them, support them, and show up, then maybe it's worth considering. And and the other thing there too is if you're going to put too much on your plate. So if you're already doing a lot of things and then you're asked to do this as well, I wouldn't do it because you're not going to be able to give the time and energy that you need. So one year, uh, and I talk about this in my book, a student of mine, Donovan, wrote a play. I was asked to, so I created a class where we were going to like put on the play, right? So we did, and it was a wild success. The next year they were like, oh, you have, you're going to teach drama. Bro, what? No one I was in a play last in the sixth grade when I played Buzz in Computerized Christmas at the Morristown Mall in New Jersey. I don't know how to act. I don't know anything about plays. I just knew it. I was helping Donovan do it. And so that them doing that to me that year, I couldn't do anything else. It took up all my time and energy. And guess what? We didn't even have a play at the end of the year because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I don't know how I got out of that that year either, but definitely did. I think I just kept it so quiet. No one remembered. <laughs> She's so, busy with a million other things. Yeah. Uh, John Lopez said that Wooly Willie was born in 1955 See. in Pennsylvania. See, I know. Did it. you know that? He looks in like Pennsylvania. It. Awesome. I mean, he looks like a drinker with that nose. I'm not sure, but. You know. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. We're out of questions. All right. Well, we're at an hour anyway. So listen, next week is the last week for this season. And then we're taking off for June and we are doing a wild revamp. And we'll be back right after the 4th of July which if you can believe we're already in that time of year where we're saying, Hey, look, we'll be back after the 4th of July, which is crazy. Um, mm -hmm. Again, if you're looking for um, mentorship over the summer, uh, you're looking for someone to coach you through your education and even unpacking the year, you can hit us up right at realrapidreynolds.com and sign up for mentoring there. Or if your school is looking for someone to speak this summer to run professional development in the fall, please have them reach out or you can reach out to us to get the ball rolling at Real Rap with Reynolds at gmail.com. I know a couple of people hit me up last week about this. Um, and I was away at a conference and it was, it was overwhelming in the most special and magical way. And so I did not get back to emails as quickly as I would like. We have over a hundred emails in there right now, oh, which goodness. is that's what we're doing tomorrow. Woo yeah. Woo love emails. <laughs> so oh, I do, I love connecting with people. It's just, it's getting rid of all the other crap. I yeah. think that's the hardest part, it's but fine. yeah. So that's it, gang. We will see you uh, next week for the, I guess, the season finale. Yeah. Right? I, I, I don't know. We don't usually end in June until like the last two weeks of June. Did you forget? No. Yeah. I think so. so All right. Good. There's some confusion on that. So, But we'll be back next week. We're going to talk about it. Figure it out. <laughs> Have a great week, everyone. Peace.